parking lot. Oh, uh, really? French drain because there's water coming from the parking lot. Still working on that? No, well, they started working. Had half pieces of it in the body and the body. Yeah. They're supposed to be done by Saturday afternoon. Unless they struck all of them. What? Unless they struck all of them. Bubbling you.
Reverend Father, we come to you this evening. Thanking you for bringing us through this day. I do thank you for bringing us to your house. And ask your blessings on each one of us. God bless you. We look to his family in a special way over this weekend. God, and watch over them and help them. Ask you to get the wisdom past the right words so that someone may come to know the Lord Jesus, our Savior, God, we ask you to watch over us in the coming days and help us through the week. We, we don't know how to turn except we ask you, and we thank you for that. We ask you, ask you to help us in all that we do and give us a good service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll let you be seated, but we can sing one more song together. I've seen the one story that Christ died for me. Let's see it out there. Seated in our seats. 499. These words on the screen for you.
appreciate you being here. But as we get ready now to receive our offering, Brother King has talked about for the long horn, the other expenses of our church. I mentioned this morning about my brother's church down in Texas. Now, if they want a long horn, they just go down low and buy it. But we're not that way. We, we're kind of shortchanged. Right? So we encourage you to give tonight as God has blessed and prospered you. And I know that if we'll be honest with God, God be honest with us. Amen. And every need will be provided. So you fellows, you're ready to come. And we'll receive our offering. And folks, again, thank you for coming and sharing and caring today in behalf of our ministry here. All right. Well, Lord, lead us in prayer. Would you please? Father, as we come to you in prayer tonight, we come with thankful hearts. Thank you for the church that we can meet in, Lord, without fear of being persecuted. God, thank you for a nation that we stand in tonight that's free. And Father, I just pray for our country tonight, Lord. I ask you to help us, Lord, as a church to start a revival here in this place as it's spread all over this land. Father, I pray for Brother Lee tonight as he preaches. God, I ask you to give him clarity of thought. Lord, guard his tongue. May he lift up Jesus and lift him high. Lord, uh, help him to say the words you want said. Father, I pray for every heart here tonight that you might anoint it. Father, we might be responsive to your word. Thank you for this offering we're about to receive. I ask you to bless it, Lord, for the need of the hour. And Lord, for all the prayer requests that people have on their hearts, whether they're spoken or unspoken tonight. God, I just lift those up to you and ask you to minister to people as only you can. Touch them, Lord, the ones that just need your healing touch. We pray in Jesus' precious name to him we ask you. Amen.
someone brought to my attention a little while ago that Miss Francis back there is celebrating 63 years. Is that correct, Miss Francis? The marriage there. And so we want to honor her tonight. We miss you this morning. A wonderful. You can let him know the comments of that, by the way. You can get him later. He's the one that told me, so I wasn't going to tell, but. <laughs> Let's sing happy anniversary to Miss Francis. Would you celebrate or is it coming this week? It was the second. Well, that's wonderful. 63 years. That's commendable. And so we honor people like that, folks like that who stay at it, so we appreciate that. And so let's let's say happy anniversary to her. All right, let's sing it with me there. Happy anniversary. Testimonies tonight, there this evening. Anybody at all? Miss Loretta? sing for us tonight. Yes, we pray for him. Amen. And I know Melissa had a couple sick this morning, so you pray for a little set. And uh, he's been sick this morning. Right after him, Emily, we appreciate you being here with us today. So we're going to follow here. And let's pray for him and Isaac to sing so.
like the gospel story in the song that he sang. Right. Uh, let me ask you, Brother Lee, you can work your way on up, and I'll talk to you get here. They talk me in radio, don't ever have dead time. <laughs> um, I run across a lot of other things in the head, dead radio, and you know, not supposed to have time. But as I just said, you think about the gospel that he was singing about. Right? Amen. Right. Now, let me ask you, as he comes, are you going? Amen. Now, I know there are a lot of folks who sit on church pews. I understand that. Right. Just because someone sits on church pews doesn't mean a dime worth of anything except they are occupied with one thing they should be and not with something they should not be. Right. See what I'm saying? Let's pray for uh, uh, Pastor. He comes back. He and his dear wife. He'll be a wench tonight. And folks, he's uh, teaching on some scripture in the book of Romans. And I know some of you have a leaning towards uh, some of our Baptist brothers. You should, should primitive, you know. What's going to be is not going to be whether it ever happens or not. And, uh, you don't want to fool with that. But Brother Lee's going to do the preaching tonight, so you listen to him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. Thank you so very, very much. Enjoy that song yet from that old fella? Amen. Wasn't that tremendous? Yes, I thought sir. it was great singing for Jesus, amen? Amen. And that's wonderful. Yes, sir. I want to thank you for your kindness to my wife and I and uh, your graciousness. I want to thank Ken for the delicious meal. And uh, out today, and uh, it's just been a great joy to be here. And uh, thank you so very, very much. I thank the Lord for Brother Scoggins, Brother Sloan, and of course your senior pastor. I uh, thank the Lord for him, uh, his uh, love Amen. for you, his love for God, his love for the Bible. Amen. And his love for the church. Amen. Yes, sir. And uh, his desire for preaching. Amen. And uh, so we're very grateful for him. As I mentioned this morning, my wife and I, we are with uh, Mount Pisgah Scripture Printing Ministry uh, after pastoring for 32 years, and uh, the Lord has led us into this ministry. I won't stop you to say a couple of things about it. One of the things that I'm really excited about is uh, this uh, Arabic Bible that we have printed 25,000 copies of. Uh, we have already shipped 10,000 of those to the country of Turkey. There are a million refugees that have come out of Syria into Turkey. We could not get into Syria, but we had a contact in Turkey. And uh, so we printed 25,000 of them. We have 15,000 more to ship unless they were shipped this week. And uh, can you imagine 25,000 of the truth for the very first time for somebody who the only Bible he's ever seen is the Koran. Right. And he'll be able to hold God's word for the very first time. To me, that's exciting. And, uh, you know, I thank the Lord for that. And if you would pray for us, we would appreciate, uh, appreciate it so very, very much. This is uh, our New Testament that we give to the military. Uh, it's an excellent uh, New Testament. We have in the back even have some songs for those who love to sing the words there. And uh, then, of course, we have uh, the uh, a Bible study, a good new convert class. Uh, lessons. I think it's ten of them there. It begins with salvation, baptism, etc. and goes on. And uh, we provide those to the military. We have a church down in uh, Tennessee. I forgot the name of it. And I talked to the pastor last year. Every Memorial Day, they go to the Vietnam Memorial. Uh, they pass out these uh, New Testaments to those there. They have literally passed out hundreds of thousands of them. We provided them, uh, uh, we provided them free of charge. And uh, they passed them out. Uh, they have uh, recorded a lot of uh, salvation decisions. I had rather, if I was going to give somebody something of great value, Paul writing to Timothy said that the Word of God, all Scripture, is profitable. Amen. So what I, you know, the greatest gift that you can give is a copy of God's Word. Amen. And uh, that's what we're doing. My wife and I are excited about it. And uh, we are very grateful. We are missionaries. And uh, we receive no salary from uh, anybody and except the Lord. And uh, that's uh, how we uh, get our uh, salary. And so we're, we're very grateful for that. 
So if you would pray for us, we would appreciate it so very, very much. It's been a great joy for me to be here today. Thank you again for your kindness, your graciousness, and uh, your prayers. If you pray for us when we leave, it would be a such great blessing to us. I want to take uh, the next few moments that we have this evening and, and try to be a great encouragement for those of you who have come tonight from the book of Judges chapter 6. From the book of Judges chapter 6. Israel has found themselves in a mess. And of course, you know, the, the Lord is always willing to help us. You know, most of the things, uh, a lot of the things, maybe not most of them, and then again, it may be most of them. Our heartaches and trials and hard times we bring upon ourselves. And this was the case with the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel would sin and they would go to God and say, Oh God, help us, we're so sorry. And God would give them a judge to deliver them. Well, now they are finding themselves in a terrible spot there between a rock and a hard place. The Midianites and the Amalekites have come upon them. And the only place that Israel has uh, had to go, look in, uh, let's begin reading in chapter 6, verse 1. It says, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains, and caves, and strongholds. In other words, they were living in caves and dens. And they had nowhere else to live. And uh, they, they were in a terrible place. And look at verse 3. So it was when Israel had sown... In other words, when they had sold their crops, that the Mennonites came up and, and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them. And they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth without uh, coming to Gaza and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox or anything. For they come up with their cattle and their tents and, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude. And not only them, but they, the Bible says, for they, both they and their camels were without number. And they entered into the land to destroy it. And so God is looking for a man to deliver. And when God looks for a man, He looks for men. He looks for a man to deliver them. He looks for men to follow the man that he's going to use to deliver them. He did that with Abraham. He did it with Moses. Uh, he did it with uh, uh, all the patriarchs. And so God is now looking for a man, and he's looking for men. He's looking for men of vision, men of valor, men of, men of vigilance, men of vitality, men of victory. As a matter of fact, he goes from, what, is, what was it? We'll look at it in just a moment. Something like uh, 32,000 Israelites and uh, he's going to drive out the Midianites. God, once again, is going to have mercy upon Israel. And he, he dwindles the Israelites from 32,000 down to 300. And uh, he doesn't want them to be proud. He wants them to know that he, God, has delivered them again. And given them... Mercy. Amen. And so he chooses a man by the name of Gideon. And Gideon is sort of like, I suppose I was, I, you know, my mom and dad were not saved. I was not raised in a Christian home. I was raised in a good home, but I was not raised in a Christian home. And uh, Gideon uh, says the same thing, and, and uh, when when uh, the Lord uh, looks upon him, and, and uh, they, they come to anoint uh, Gideon, and and he says in verse 15, he said unto them, O oh my Lord, where will shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor than an and I am the least in my father's house. My family is poor. I'm the least in my father's house. And you looking for somebody to deliver Israel? Why in heaven's name are you looking at me? Where do we find Gideon? Well, Gideon is thrashing wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. He is thrashing wheat to eat in secret. Because the Midianites, when they found him, would destroy him. And so he's 
there by the wine press thrashing wheat. The angel of the Lord comes on the scene in verse 12. It says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And get him sick. Have you been here? The word Gideon said, notice what he said, and Gideon said unto him, the angel of the Lord, oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? You say that I'm a mighty man of God? And you say that the Lord is with us? If the Lord is with us, I'm in bad shape. I don't know what's going on. Because remember where they were. They were hiding in dens, hiding in caves, thrashing wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. Angel of the Lord appears to him and says, Oh, give him thou a mighty man of God. And you're the one. And he said, Oh, my. If the, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? Now watch, verse 13 again. And where be all these miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And yet you couldn't understand what was going on. Have you ever been to the place in your life where you didn't understand? Have you ever been to the place that you found life hard at times? Let's see your hand. I like that you found life hard at times. Oh boy. Isn't that true? Oh, we found life hard at times, just like Gideon. Have you been to the place when you just didn't understand what was going on? Boy, you look fancy. Lord, why is this befalling us? I don't understand it. I'm doing the best I can. I'm serving you. I'm going on for God. And all of a sudden, this is befalling us. Lord, I, I don't understand it. And uh, my wife and I, we have been blessed with uh, three girls, um, five grandsons, and now a seven-month-old uh, seven granddaughter. And uh, so my wife is so thrilled. Uh, she was just buying all-boy things, and now for the very first time she gets to buy girly things for the little granddaughter. She's so excited. She's so happy. And I'm broke. <laughs> and she's only seven months old. Heaven, time she gets to be three years old, I will really be broke. I mean, I will. But the Lord has been so good to us. That daughter was 20 years of, uh, of age. We, uh, she was the youngest at the time. and uh, She was, uh, I think, maybe a, a junior, maybe at Liberty and nursing. She lived at home and commuted back and forth. And she had a little not come up right here. And she went to her mother and she said, Mom, she said, I got this right here. Mom said, well, we better call the doctor and get a check. And uh, so called the doctor. She met the uh, a nurse practitioner. And the nurse, practici uh, nurse practitioner said, it's just uh, a gland probably. It's nothing to worry about. Don't fret about it. A couple of weeks will be gone. And so she come home, and a couple of weeks went by, and three weeks and four weeks, and uh, that place was still there, and it was getting a little bit bigger. And uh, she said, Mom, this thing getting there. Mama looked at it, said, you need to go back to the doctor. So she goes back, and again, she sees the nurse practitioner. And the nurse practitioner says, well, it's just going to take a, a little longer, and it's nothing to worry about, whatever. And, and uh, so she went home in another few weeks, and uh, she went to her mom, and she said, Mom, I'm worried about this place right here. It's not going away, and it's, it's bothering me. And uh, her mama told her, said, uh, you go this time, you go to the doctor, you call, you tell her that you want to see Dr. Wade. You know, I said, anybody but Dr. Wade. And so she did. Dr. Wayne examined Joy, and he said, uh, Joy, how long have you had this? And she said, a couple of months. And uh, he said, I'm scheduling you right now. I'm going to call the, the doctor. And uh, you're leaving here, and you're going straight to the doctor. She did, and uh, make a long story short, it was cancer, and after two major surgeries, um, it's hard for me to even talk about it now, and um, uh, 
Um, after two major surgeries, and uh, she's fine, but I remember the day that we got word, and I'd left, and the church went to the a hospital. We had a guy who was going to have a heart procedure, and I was going to be there with them, and I knew that uh, they wouldn't go with him Lynchburg had to send him to Charlottesville. And I knew they were going to call the doctor there, and Dr. Rival was his name in Charlottesville, the surgeon. And uh, he said, I'm going to call sometime today. So we were sort of anxious to receive the news and uh, whatever it was. And so I was there in the parking lot of the hospital and uh, getting ready to go in. And what I would try to do is I would try to pause for a second, pray for whomever I was going to see that the Lord would help them and so forth. And of course, and then my cell phone rang. And uh, it was uh, Joanne, and she said, we need you at home. And so I, I called my associate and I told him, yeah, to come to the hospital and I went home. And uh, there on the, the uh, sofa when I got there and Joy and Joanne was uh, sitting there and, and uh, we were like idiots. Lord, we don't understand this. We don't understand what's going on. We've done the best we could. Our young daughter who then was 20 years of age lived with the Lord all of her life. Loved God that she couldn't understand. We, you know, none of us could understand. We've been there, Gideon. We know what it's like. When Gideon said, Oh my Lord, why then is, is all of this befallen us? The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of battle. How many of you think sometimes life's hard? Right. You ever been to the place and wondered? Uh, you know, why is this uh, happening? Gideon did that. I have a preacher friend then in Georgia, one of the toughest men I know. He pastor for several years, was a missionary to Mexico, uh, been a missionary for, I don't know, 25, 30 years, and uh, was coming, um, was leaving home one day in Georgia, driving on the road, uh, and the guy popped over the hill, drunk, wrong side of the road, hit it head on. Now, he had already had five back surgeries, and one surgery in his neck. And, of course, this wreck liked to kill him. They airlifted him to Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, later on, he, he almost died, and uh, later on, his, his wife told us, said, you know, um, this is really the only thing that I've ever seen that would touch the heart of everything else that I mean, boy, he'd been, but he wondered. Well, why did you allow this to happen? Why did this happen? And right now he's still suffering from, from his uh, foot. Many broke him all to pieces. And he wondered. Well, why did this happen? Well, I'm glad we got a God with all the answers, and one day we'll know it. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. But until then, what the Lord has helped me with down through the years is the great principle that He encourages us to do, and that is that you and I, as believers, we walk by faith. We do not walk by sight. Amen. We walk by faith, trusting the God of heaven, who reached down one day and saved our wretched souls, recorded our name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Gave us a purpose for living. Gave us the pleasure of serving Him. Thank God for that. Amen. And so what do we do? We just keep walking by faith. Now, I remember all the time that our daughter was in Charlottesville. And uh, why drive home? I drive home, preach on Wednesday night, drive home from the hospital on, uh, on Saturday night, preach uh, uh, twice on Sunday, drive back on Sunday night. Not understand, not understanding, but walking by faith. It's the only thing you can do. And so Gideon finds uh, himself here uh, in a real mess. And he doesn't know exactly what to do about it. One of the things that, the great promises that Gideon received, if you look there in verse 15 with me, it says, and he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith, uh, wherewith uh, shall I say this? We will hold my family as poor and as I am least in my father's house. Verse 16. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee. Amen. That's the promise. So it doesn't make any difference where you find yourself in life. 
We always have the promise. The Lord said, I will surely be with the, thee. Amen. The reason I love this blessed book, oh, through this book I will cling of this work, I will sing, though great losses and crosses be mine. I will not despair those surrounded by care of my possessions, this blessed divine. Thank God you can trust the Bible. Amen. You can trust the Bible. And uh, you can trust everything in it that the Lord says. And when the Lord makes us a promise that He will surely be with us, guess what? Amen. He will surely be with us. Amen. And uh, that is His uh, promise. God was looking. We have the promise. We have a person. But look over in chapter 7 with me. The Lord gets down to business. He's getting ready not only because He's chosen His man... This man is Gideon. And now he's, cho he's choosing the men to follow Gideon. Look at verse 3 of chapter 7. Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gideon. And there returned of the people 22,000, and there remained 10,000. So 22,000 said, you know, we're, we're, afraid, we're afraid to go against the Midianites. And uh, the Lord said, that's fine, let them go, no recourse, whatever. And there were 10,000 left. Look at verse 4. And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people are yet too many. Bring them down to the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whom I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. And of course they got down, and of course some got down like, you know, uh, like this right here. Get down and you get before they went down into the water like this right here. They, and they, they drank the water. And uh, there were 300 of them that did this. Get the water out and bring it to the mouth. But alert. Watching. Remember, there was a war with the Midianites. The Midianites found them as death. Hiding in dens and caves. And so here are the 300. The Lord said, I'll say this for you. Three hundred. You know, when I read that, if you'll look over in verse uh, 7 with me, it says, And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that left, will I save you and deliver the Midianites into thy hand, and let all the other people go every man uh, unto his place. And something I want you to see in verse 7. And uh, which is a great blessing to me. Look at verse 7. It says, And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the 300 men that left, will I save you. Amen. That's what God said. God said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to save you. But I'm going to choose 300 men to do it. God said, I'm going to do it. But I'm going to use 300 men to do it. See, the responsibility was the Lord's. He said, I'm going to save you. But I'm going to use 300 men to do it. It's just like when I thought about that, and I thought about the ministry that the Lord has given Joanne and I. And... Um, Getting Bibles to those who never, who never had a copy of God's Word. The Lord's going to do it. But He's got to use 300 to do it. I'm just using that as a figure. He's going to do it because He's got the power to do it. Amen. But He's going to use the 300 to do it. And the God will surely do His part. Amen. But the wonderful thing about it is. He chooses us to have a part. Right, amen. Aren't you glad of that? Aren't you glad the Bible says that we are co-laborers with God? Amen. God said, I'm going to save you. But I'm going to do it by these three months. And, uh, you know, I think about that. I think, about, my, what a, what a wonderful, wonderful thing that you and I have. And uh, that is to have a part with the God of this universe in reaching people. Amen. Nothing like it. That God would, God would allow us to do that. And it ought to, listen, I'll tell you what, it, it ought to do something for us. It ought to, it ought to ring our bell. Right. <coughs> you ever been to these fairs? 
He used to go to them when I was a boy. And I've always been small. And uh, I see these old great big guys, you know, they get up. And remember these old things? You know, you get a prize and you've got a great big old mallet like this right here. Some of you old timers, you remember that? And you hit that thing down like that and that thing go bing. And ring the bell. And, uh, boy, I've seen some of the big guys couldn't do it. And I couldn't, you know, I was having a problem. Finally, the guy took me aside. He said, listen, he said, don't try so hard. Just make sure you hit it right down there. And he said, you'll get that pin. And so I did. I was the smallest of the bunch. Just grabbed the old guy. They were trying. They couldn't do it. And I walked. I grabbed that mighty boy. And I got up and the guy had already told me what to do. Man, I took that thing and I said, boom. And they go, bing. Man, them guys turned around. They didn't know what in the world was going on. There's a little fella that has made the bell ring. You know, there are a lot of folks in church think they're just little fellas. But you're important to God. Amen. Right. You're important to God. You see, the Lord needs us all. The Lord's going to do it, but He needs the 300 to do it. I'm going to notice again in verse 7, and the Lord said unto Gideon, by the 300 men that left, will I save you? But I'm going to do it by the 300 men. He uses 300. We're co-laborers with Him. Co-laborers with the Lord. Amen. And uh, that brings me peace. That gives me hope. That gives me courage. He said, the Lord is with thee. Paul writing to in Romans chapter 8, and that wonderful, wonderful chapter said, if God be for us, who can be against us? Right. You see, we, those of us who are saved, we've always been the minority. Always have. We're not the majority in this world. And everybody knows that. Right. I mean, you don't have to go to college. <laughs> right? I mean, you know that. And uh, we're the minority. But God and me make a majority. Amen. If God be for us, who then can be against us? Right. By the 300, he said, will I save you? If God be for us, who's going to be against us? God doesn't need a majority. God is the majority. Amen. He takes five loaves and three fishes and feeds five thousand. I said this morning, he can speak to the waves and to the wind. The waves cease. He can do it. He is the majority. I think I'll just continue to cast my lot with the Lord till He comes. What about you? Amen. Look at the 300. Amen. Will we be a part of the 300? Something else that you and I can do is too. We can uh, we can rest on God's promises. You know, there's a there's a wonderful verse that will help you. And if you turn to First uh, Kings with me. 1 Kings chapter 8. I've got that underlined in my Bible. 1 Kings chapter 8. In 1 Kings chapter 8, Solomon is given the prayer after he's finished the temple. And I want you to notice what he says over in verse 56. He has finished his prayer in verse 53. And in verse 54 he continues, and then in verse 56 it says, Blessed be the Lord that has given rest unto his people Israel. Now watch. According to all that he promised... <coughs> Thou hast not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. Amen. God said there has not been one word that God promised that has not come true. 
Not one. And you and I can look at the past and say that's true. Hey, but you and I can also now look to the future. And we can trust the future. There's not one word that God has said in this blessed book that He will not bring to pass. Right. Not one. And that was the testimony of Solomon. You know, God is able to help us when nobody else can help us. Amen. He can help us when it seems like there is no help. Right. He can help us when it seems like there is no hope. Amen. He can help us when we're going through this world and it seems like all of a sudden all we see in this world are giants. We have a choice like they had in us. And Joshua and Caleb and the others. Joshua and Caleb said, listen, we can trust the promise of God. And the other people said, oh, we've seen the giants. We've seen the giants. Oh, have you seen those Goliath? We've seen the giants. There's a lot of giants in this world. We could go along down a long list. But God is able to help us when we see the giants. Right, amen. Whatever giant comes in your life, there's a God in heaven who's bigger than any problem you've ever had. He can pare that in a giant, the largest giant that you see. God can do it. Amen. So God is able to help us just like Gideon. Gideon didn't have any hope. The people didn't have any hope. Living in dens and caves, and starving to death, having to hide for food and thrash wheat. But God is able to help us like the Gideon and the Midianites. He's able to help us when we're outnumbered. You ever been outnumbered in life? Yes. If you're a Christian, you're outnumbered. <laughs> it's a big number. Right. Uh, but you know what? I'd rather I'd rather have Jesus. But I said this morning, anything in this world. Amen. Amen. Let the numbers roll. Let them do what they want to. Amen. Remember what they said in, in uh, chapter six that I, that I read just a moment ago. And uh, let me read that again in, in uh, Judges chapter six and uh, verse five. It said, uh, "Well, they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude." For both they and their camels were without number, and they entered, entered into the land and destroyed it. Right. They were vastly outnumbered, but God gave them the victory. God is able to help us when we see the giants, when we are outnumbered. God is able to help us when we think it is impossible. Amen. Never been in an impossible situation like you. Mm -hmm. Live very long you have. You didn't see a way out. But God is able to bring you out. Amen. And he brought the Israelites and Gideons out. God is able to help us when we think that it is literally impossible. But God can do it. God is able to help us when we don't understand. As a matter of fact, God is bigger than any problem I have or will ever have. Amen. Amen. Well, if I could just continue to tell myself that. I know it's true. He's proven himself down through the years. He's bigger than any problem I have or any problem I will ever face. He's bigger. God is a God of mercy. They had disobeyed God God gave them mercy. Amen. He did not give them what they deserved. He gave them mercy. Amen. Some folks say, well, I'll tell you what, I want what's coming to me. Not me. Not me. I don't know what I don't know what's coming to me. I just want God's mercy. Amen. Yes, the mercy of God. He didn't give them what they deserved. I remember a lot of times in life 
have never, I have not gotten what I deserve in life. We have the mathematics, and I'm a little ashamed to tell you this, but we have an mathematics of 25 mile an hour speed limit. I can walk 25 miles an hour. <laughs> I mean, I can walk 25 miles an hour. And he went right down next to the funeral home. And you turn, and that's the way I went home every day. I have state troop, a new state troop. I knew all the state troopers there in the county. I knew we moved in. And I met in quick. He said in that 25 mile an hour zone. He gave me one ticket. And gave me four breaks. The last time he stopped me, he said, Preacher. He said, I don't need you. He said, I don't need you. And he called me. He said, Preacher Lee. He said, Preacher Lee. He said, that was embarrassing, brother. It was. And he said, I don't know. I don't need to see your registration. I always, I never, never had that in a way. I handed my driver. He said, I don't need to see your driver's license. He said, I just need to tell you again that this is a 25 mile an hour speed limit. He didn't give him what I deserved. He gave him mercy. I was, uh, one other time I'll close, and I was uh, going down through that. I was late for a meeting. I had to meet somebody, and I don't know what had happened. And uh, this was a deputy. He was sitting down there next to the school. And uh, I, don't have, I have no idea how fast I was going. Were you breaking the speed limit? I was breaking the speed limit today. And it wasn't that I intended to do it. It was just that I was I was already late. I didn't want to be in it later. And I went through radar there and I said, Oh me. And here he comes. And I knew it. And he was training the guy with me. And so I got up in my car and I met him halfway. He said, Preacher Lee, he said, Where are you going? And I told him. And he stood around there and he hummed and he and he had another guy with him. He didn't have another other guy with him. I don't think it was ever wrong. And uh, he said, uh, you know what? He said, you deserve a ticket. You deserve a ticket. I said, I, I know. I know what to do. And he said, I don't know what to do. And I wanted to tell him, well, I don't know what to do. Just let me go. <laughs> I mean, is that a hard? I mean, <laughs> why are you having such a problem discussing this? <laughs> I mean, I know. <laughs> and finally he said, uh, you know what? He said, I'm going to let you go. He said, but if I ever catch you doing this again, he said, I'm going to take you to jail. And I said, yes, sir. <laughs> I got mercy. <coughs> you know what else? Because of Jesus. I got God's mercy. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. And now God's not going to give me what I deserve. Because 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ took my guilt on Calvary. Amen. And poured upon Him what I deserve. Right. So that I could go free. Now, there are a lot of things that happen from the time that we get saved until the time that we go to glory. And we'll come to times just like you. That we'll go in a room somewhere that we buy ourselves and we'll tell God, God, I don't understand. I don't know. Here's one thing I'm going to do. You told me in your word that I could trust you. That you would always be with me. And with that I'll stand. If you'll continue to give me the grace and the strength, I'll continue.
God's grace and mercy and strength and His love to us is greater than any problem we will ever have on this side of glory. Amen. I think I'll just keep trusting Him. Amen. Amen. Even though I don't understand, would you stand with me, please? It's about the eyes of glory. Is anybody here tonight say, Preacher? I really don't think I'm saved. Would you pray for me? I want to pray for you. I want to come to you. I'm not embarrassed. Anybody like that, I just want to pray for you. Kids about eyes and clothes, you just slip up your hands and pray to pray for me. Anybody like that tonight? Anybody? Anybody? I need to be saved. Anybody here tonight? Kids about eyes and clothes. And you say, Preacher, there's some things I'm facing. Would you pray with me about them? I not only will pray with you about them here, I will pray with you about them tomorrow. And the next day, and the next day. Things I don't understand in life. Right now, it's hard for me. Would you pray? It's about eyes closed. Anybody like that? Anybody like that? God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you, man. God bless you, sir. God bless you, man. Heavenly Father, upon bended knee, we come to you tonight and we thank you for grace. We thank you, Lord, for not giving us what we deserve. We thank you for mercy. God, we thank you for helping us, for saving us, for giving us what we need in life. How grateful we are. The Lord, how grateful we are that you saved us. And Lord, you promised us you'd always be with us. And so, dear Lord, I pray that you might help us. I pray for those that raise their hand. So right now I'm going through a hard time. Lord, sometimes life is hard. But like it was in the days of Gideon, we don't understand. I pray for them. Lord, I've been there. I know what it's like. And so, Lord, I pray that you bless them in a very special way. I pray that you might help them. I pray, God, that you would help us all to realize how much you love us. You proved it on Calvary. And how that you promised us you'd always take care of us. So be with us today. Lord, I pray that we just learn to trust you through life. Lord, help us, we pray in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. We're going to sing a hymn of invitation. And Pastor Scoggins is going to lead us. And for some reason you need to come to an old-fashioned altar tonight, I invite you to come. You need to come for prayer, or whatever the case may be. You leave your place, and you come. Maybe you just want to pray by yourself. Whatever the case is, you come as he sings. It's 581 in him. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his just to know the same
We do thank you, brother, for coming. Thank Amen. you for the message tonight. As he preached from the story of Gideon tonight, folks, how many times have you heard or how many times have you used if you're putting something together and you can't get it to work, go back and follow the directions. Amen. Now, how many times has that happened to all of us? That's right. All right. That's the simple thing that the pastor was mentioning tonight. Amen. If you don't understand, like follow the direction. What are the directions? The king is saying about tonight. Only trust him. Amen. It's for it is. No real big secret. All these other things. But folks, I appreciate you coming tonight. <clears throat> uh, David wanted us to receive an offering at the end of the service for him. We get a couple of fellows, maybe some big fellows, you know, intimidating guys. So as you walk by, they look at you. Isn't that right? But if you can share, it's a special offering for Brother Lee tonight. I do trust that you will. And folks try to be here Wednesday night. I realize with circumstances with some of you, you can't come. I understand that. But don't just stay home just because of no reason when you could be in the house of God Amen. and support the house of God. Pastor and I were talking a few minutes ago. There are churches tonight that close their doors for the simple reason folks won't come. Now, let me ask you, as honest as I know how, do you want that a new hope? That we close our doors on Wednesday night because folks won't come? I was working with a pastor one time years ago, and we were talking about this tension. And he said, Carter, why have it? Folks won't come. Okay. Let's just close up on Sunday morning. He said, oh, no, 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 we got to have church on Sunday. I said, why? Folks won't come. Now, am I not right? Why do we have church so you can come and honor God? Amen. Folks, that's our biggest reason for coming is to worship and honor God. And we'll do that. The Lord will bless our heart. So as you go out tonight, you let him know you appreciate the services today. Appreciate him coming and sharing with us and be a blessing to our church. Pray for our pastor and his dear wife and, and all the family. They'll be together as many of them as can tomorrow. They're in Knoxville for their graduation. And keep in mind then and pray for them as they get ready to get married. Very important time in their lives for Amen. and uh, mine. So folks, thank you for sharing. For the better dismissals in prayer tonight, would you please and thank God for the services if you would?